Do you want to revolutionize the way you do your stonework with XPS foam and foam core? Then you need to build this foam roller and we're doing that this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week I wanted to do something a little bit different and show you a couple of tools that I like to use that have really revolutionized um, the way I work with XPS foam and a couple other different uh, medium, like green stuff. That's right, I said a couple. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a bonus tool that I made that took only maybe a few minutes and it's really awesome too. But the main focus of this video is this XPS foam roller. So I have a lot of uh, builds coming up, big builds that require a lot of stonework. And I was going to just suck it up and go ahead and just cut all these little bricks out in stone. And I'm like, you know what, a few months back I saw a video again with Jeremy from Black Magic Craft and Gerard Boom from Shifting Lands. And Gerard is selling these on his website, shiftinglands.com. Um, but he also said in his video that there's a way that you can actually make these with like a PVC uh, pipe and like a little Dremel tool, draw your design out on it and just go to town and you can actually make your own foam roller. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then Gerard said it takes about 20 hours to make one. So I was like, oh man, I don't know if I want to do that. So I thought about it for a while and I said, you know what? I was curiosity got the best of me and I'm like, I'm going to go for it and at least start one and see how long it takes. So. The roller that I made is uh, six and a half inches long because the average height of each level of a floor that I build for a building is about three inches. So I figured I could do two stories with one roll on this. And it only took me about five, five and a half hours to do this roller. It's some little bit larger stone. I'm gonna start another one, which is like more of like a flagstone layered brick or something like that that I'm gonna start in this video, um, which I think is probably gonna take a little bit longer. But I'll do about a one inch piece of that and then we'll multiply that by six and that'll give you an idea of about how long it's going to take you to make your foam roller um, with a little bit more intricate design. At the end of the video I'll do a demo on XPS foam and like your dollar store foam core and um, there is definitely a difference um, in quality but they have, both have their pros and cons so we'll check that out. Um, yeah so Oh, also, you probably know if you've been following it on my channel that I'm building a studio in my basement. And as a result, I had to do a lot of different plumbing and some changes down there. So I have a bunch of different diameters of this stuff kicking around in my garage. So that kind of lucked out. But you can get this stuff at like Home Depot or Lowe's, any of your building supply stores. So I got a bunch of this in my garage. Let's go out, grab a piece, and let's get crafting. Okay, so go ahead and take a sharpie and draw out any design you want for your roller pattern, making sure to leave a little gap between each uh, brick, which you're not going to remove. Alright, so you're going to want to make sure to be wearing a glove in your offhand, that way you don't get hurt here. And make sure you have nice vertical lines, go as deep as you can. If you poke through, it 
it's all right, keep going, just adds texture. And uh, this one piece right here, the one inch that I did, took about a half an hour. So you can expect to spend about three and a half hours or so uh, to get yourself a six, six and a half inch uh, XPS foam roller uh, like this. Alright, so you're going to go ahead and attach the metal brush here. Just be careful not to push too hard because you'll remove any texture um, that you get on the brick um, once you use the roller, as well as removing grout lines possibly. So just go nice and easy. And uh, this is an inch and a quarter piece of PVC. All right, so here we have the foam roller that I've been using on a lot of my builds and the one that uh, we just did here in this video. You can see the change here. I've got some smaller brick pattern and this is a quite a bit larger stone look. Um, so the handle here um, that I put on this one, I thought it might be kind of like a cool idea to, to like roll on the XPS. And it works okay, but I find it's better just to kind of use all your force and push into the, the foam when you're rolling it. So I don't even use these. I'll probably just end up cutting that off. Um, but what you want to do, and one of the main things when you're making one of these rollers, is the lines here um, between the stone, you want to make those as thin and as vertical as possible because that's what's really going to cut down into the foam and leave you a really good defined line. Um, you don't want to be afraid of getting too deep and busting holes through. You can see here, um, there's actually quite a few holes. I don't know if you can see it on that. Um, when I was going through, and that's totally fine. It just adds texture um, to the stonework when you're done. It's actually kind of a cool little bonus. And it ensures that you're getting deep enough down to get a really good uh, impression on the foam. So again, don't worry about busting through. You don't want to bust through on purpose all over the place because then obviously it's going to weaken it up over time. But this PVC is really um, a sturdy product here. I mean, I'm squeezing on that as hard as I can and I'm not messing with that at all. So it's going to push through the foam, no problem, even with the holes in it. So those are the, uh, the rollers. We'll get to testing them in a minute. And then the Dremel that I use is a Dremel 3000. Um, pretty standard um, Dremel here. When I cut, I go all the way up to about eight on here. Uh, it gets it spinning pretty fast, but it gets the um, bit into the XPS um, pretty easy. You're going to want to make sure you're wearing safety glasses because this stuff is going to go everywhere. Um, as you see in the video, I did it outside, and by the end of the video, I was covered in this stuff. Um, and a glove, not necessarily on the hand that's operating the tool, but the hand that's holding. Um, the uh, PVC pipe because when I was working on this one um, I was going through and I slipped and I went like right into my knuckle and you could almost see bone so yeah you want to make sure you're wearing safety gloves when you're working with this um, this Dremel comes with a kit and all kinds of uh, bits in here um, that you can use the two bits that you saw in the video um, if you just have a Dremel and you want to pick the bits up I'll put a link um, to everything actually, um, the Dremel and all these bits uh, down below. But this bit right here, uh, you'll see it's called a, a high speed, uh, it might be a little hard to see there, but it's a high speed um, cutter. It's part number 191 and it's an eighth inch or 3.2 millimeter. And this uh, for cleaning up, which is actually pretty satisfying when you have all those burrs on there, this thing wick, um, rips them right off of there uh, pretty easily. That's a three quarter inch carbon steel brush and that's part 428. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. So we'll start off with, uh, we'll use this right here and I'm gonna, I might get in the way of the film here for a minute at the shop, but I'm gonna push as hard as I can 
go across this whole piece of XPS and we'll see what the, uh, the result looks like. And you'll hear it crush and crack a little bit. All right. Oh, there you have it. That'll take a dry brush, really awesome. You can then go ahead and roll this with a little bit of aluminum foil. Very slight bend in the XPS um, after you roll it. Nothing that can't be straightened out. Um, so yeah, I mean, you imagine how long that would have taken uh, to do if you were actually cutting out um, all those individual stones. So I think that's pretty awesome. All right, and then there's also an option here to do one earlier which I think holds maybe just a little bit better. Um, if you have a thin piece of XPS, it might hold the shape just a little bit better than the thicker one. All right, so let's move on to the foam core. This stuff's really thin, and this really holds the shape really well. All right. All right, so as you can see, one negative is that it does bend the foam core after you roll it, but that's not really an issue because you can take this stuff and just glue it to some cardboard or right to some XPS and it straightens it right out. So you can actually just use this for a backer and that holds the shape better than the XPS And what might be hard to see here, but on the roller, when you're rolling this, when you're um, making this here, you've got all kinds of little indentations and stuff and all the stone. That actually shows through on the dollar store foam core. It shows through on both, but a lot more on this one. Um, so you almost don't even have to use aluminum foil to roll that after you've done uh, rolling it with the roller. Either way, they're both awesome. They're both gonna save you an absolute ton of time um, when you're working on builds here. So that's those two. And then real quick, um, just to show you here, I'll use the new mold that I had, the little one inch piece. And that really bent that, but wow, that actually, that actually really took that mold a lot better than the other one did. The, the shape on that, that's awesome. I was planning on waiting until it got a little bit warmer out to finish this one, but I might have to finish that sooner than I thought. That's cool. And then we'll do the foam core. All right, that came out really good too. Now, one of the tricks that you'll see that I'll do in one of my videos here um, coming up is you can actually take a uh, like a barbecue skewer and just straighten this out and run it right through the middle as a, like a spine and it will straighten all this uh, XPS out real nice. So there you have it. There's the rollers and the parts. Um, something that I think is going to save you a heck of a lot of time and uh, you know really looks awesome um, once it's all painted up. All right, so now for the bonus tool I was telling you guys about. This might not look like much, but this thing is totally awesome. Basically, it's a pencil. I just cut off uh, both ends on it and took some green stuff and form it into like a little teardrop shape, one fatter on one end and one a little bit pointier on the other. And then once it's still on, once it's on there and it's kind of still tacky, I'll roll it in a bunch of sand and then I'll let it set for 24 hours. Then after 24 hours, a little bit of super glue over it and that sand doesn't come off. Now you've got a really cool, two cool, two really cool um, pieces here that you can use to uh, texture your foam core 
So if you have parts and like little nooks and crannies you gotta get into, you can really get in just with the tip on that. Or you can roll a much wider piece. And I don't know if you can tell from this angle. Still working on my camera angles here. And I'll show you on a piece of foam XPS. But it really puts a cool, um, almost like a little gravel or two scale gravel um, texture on the, uh, the foam. And if I can get it in focus here, let's see, I'll show you a couple miniature bases that I did. And you can see the texture, hopefully that uh, I achieved by using that. And it's just taking this little tip and getting in there, rolling it around on the base, get wherever you have to get on it, and roll it all out. Here's another one that I did. A little guard. Put Again, this is all, the base here is also green stuff. And um, push it on there. I usually go right over the metal um, base that he's on and then um, put the cracks in there and you can see all I did was just roll this piece right over all that um, to achieve that look and uh, I got a video coming up actually a video that just came out um, a couple weeks back which was my tavern build where you'll see there were little bits of um, stonework where the stucco came off the building and I used this end right here to get into all that stucco and give it that texture so super easy um, thing to make and I use this probably every time I do a miniature and uh, definitely every time when I'm working on, uh, depending on the size, on uh, my buildings and terrain features. So there you have it, a little bonus tool that um, quick and easy to make and uh, very useful. All right, so one other bonus tool I wanted to show you guys, so I actually have uh, three here that I'm showcasing, um, is another roller. Uh, this time, instead of carving out with the Dremel, I actually added some super glue, sand, and some bits of uh, green stuff to it. Let that sit for 24 hours, and I coat it with some more super glue. So the sand is on there. I mean, it's impossible to keep it off from coming off, but that's pretty well stuck on there for the most part. And this uh, textures XPS and foam core really well also. So I'll demonstrate that real quick. So you can kind of see that texture right there. That puts a really cool, really cool stone texture on that. And we'll do the same on the foam core. And you see little bits of sand come off, but you could always reapply it to this um, if you had to. But again, a really cool texture there that you can see on both of these as well. All right, well there you have it. You got yourself an XPS foam roller and a cool little tool here to work with green stuff and foam, little tiny areas like miniature bases or little crevices on XPS foam. Uh, both tools I use all the time um, and I think you guys are gonna find a lot of use out of it uh, if you go ahead and make ones for yourself. So with that, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around.